Welcome to the Inspirational, Informational, and Transparent Aviation Careers Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to discuss what type of degree you'll need to become an airline pilot. Most importantly, though, is that you keep moving towards your career goal. My name is Carl Valeri. I'm the host of Aviation Careers Podcast, and welcome. If you're listening on YouTube, or excuse me, if you're listening uh, on one of your podcatchers, do me a favor and send us emails if you have questions at feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com, or you can go below in the description here on YouTube and ask those questions. All these questions today are going to come from those comments on YouTube. I try to get back to most of you. As you know, things have been really crazy with the airline industry uh, lately and I fly for the airline so I've been quite busy. Also another thing I'm doing today as you can tell it's a little bit brighter if you're watching this on YouTube I've decided to actually uh, enjoy a little bit of the uh, the exterior view and watch the airplanes go by. I, people have said I always get more excited when I do get to see the airplanes fly by. Uh, so anyway let's get started with uh, some of the questions uh, and this basically all these there's gonna be three of them come from the YouTube channel. So let's get started here. Um, and again, you can send us feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Their first one is, hi, sir, I'm planning to become a pilot in the near future, but I am planning on getting a degree first. Which degree would you suggest between a bachelor's of aeronautical science or a bachelor's in technical aeronautical en uh, engineering? Excuse me. Uh, as far as those are concerned, it all depends. It depends on what it is that you want to do. If you're thinking of becoming an engineer, if you're thinking in the future of designing airplanes, obviously uh, this would be a great thing. But if you're strictly thinking of becoming an airline pilot, uh, the degree... The engineering degree would look good on a resume. It definitely would look better than, say, an aeronautical sciences degree. The aeronautical sciences degree, though, it's going to focus more on the actual you know, flying portion of it, not so much the uh, the portion of designing the airplane. Although some really cool stuff, need to know information, you're going to get a little bit more about the actual operating environment in a bachelor's of science in aeronautical science. So for strictly, if we're just talking about strictly flying an airplane, uh, the best thing I think would be to get that bachelor's uh, of science in aeronautical science. But if you're thinking of any day working as an engineer, yeah, get the, the aeronautical engineering degree. Boy, I tell you, that those are the great, a great discussion there between which one you should get. But the real thing is you'd have to really um, discuss this with uh, somebody who knows your goals. And that's why I always recommend that if, if you're thinking of becoming a pilot or if you're thinking of doing this as a career, uh, talk it over with a counselor, find a career coach, that type of thing like we do here. Uh, it really does help to discuss these things because everybody's situation is very unique. But thanks for that question. So, so between the two, strictly going to be an operational type person, yeah. The aeronautical science degree is great because you're going to go over a lot of things as far as operationally, whereas the, the uh, technical degree in, in aeronautical engineering, that's more geared towards how to design, build uh, types of things. And I think it's really, uh, both are very exciting degrees to get. So really great question. Thanks, and I appreciate it. Another question coming again from the comments on YouTube says, what school did you, did you go to become a pilot and how much did it cost? Well, gosh, <laughs> you know, if you're looking at me for, for how much it cost me, it, it was a lot less when I went to school. Remember back then we didn't have these pre-solo written exams and things like that. And you could actually get a license in a lot less hours than you do today. Uh, so it's going to definitely be cheaper back then when I actually started. So, uh, Gosh, I, I I can't totally remember, but it didn't cost me much money, you know, in the thousands to get my just my private license. Big difference than it is today. Now, where where did I get my flying? Okay, this is important, especially with the last question too. Where I got my flight training was a little different than most. Uh, I went out and I got my flight training wherever I was in the country. That's odd. I didn't go to a specific school because of the fact that I had a computer consulting business and most of my clients were strewn across the country. Many times I was programming, I was designing systems, that type of thing. And I would go to one city and then in that city I would find a good flight school. So I've been to numerous flight schools throughout. But one thing I did do when I decided to actually do this as a career, I flew for 10 years privately on my own to support myself and my business. But when I decided to do this as a career, I did seek out certain uh, ratings 
in different portions of the country. Luckily, I was in New Jersey at the time. There's lots of different great schools in that area, uh, in Marstown, New Jersey, Essex County, uh, Solberg, all those areas. But I did go away to another school to get my multi-engine rating because of the fact that they could accelerate my training. And why do I bring that up? Because if you're looking to get, say, a multi-engine rating, sometimes it's a little tough to get those uh, the airplane and, and to find one that's around you locally, especially if you live in a remote area. If you live in a big city, it's usually a lot easier to find one. But sometimes you have to go to one of those bigger schools to find that, that type of aircraft or the specific aircraft that you want training in. If you want to become a seaplane pilot, right down the road here in Winter Haven, we have a great Jack Brown seaplane base. So if that's something you want to do in your career, then you may have to go somewhere to actually get those ratings. So well, how much did it cost me? Gosh, back then it was probably about 30 something thousand, which is nothing compared to now. And that's going through all my CFI and double I. Uh, but one thing, as far as the cost is concerned, one thing I do want to say, and here's a, a little tidbit, a little hack as they call it. If you're looking to get additional ratings and you do stick with one school, like I did, Towards the end, I was actually in Tampa Bay trying to finish up my ratings. I got my CFI in the building I'm in now, but I went to work for a school that was over in Tampa. Well, that school actually let me use the airplanes at a discount and wound up paying for my check ride, except for the actual examiner fee, but the airplane and everything, just so I could get my double I, my instrument instructor license. So the hack being that if you go to work for somebody or if you get your license at a specific school and they like you and they want you and they, they think you would be a good instructor, you may wind up getting some of those ratings paid for. That really, really reduces the cost. So as far as how much it costs, it's usually around 85000 I'm hearing from most people than how much they'll spend as far as all their ratings. And I'm including books and fees, etc. This is outside the degree, but they're actually looking at about that much money to spend on getting all the way to their CFI, maybe their double I, MEI. Um, Again, if you share time with people, that type of thing, it can bring those costs down when you're trying to build cross-country and, and, and all those types of things. So just think about that. Another way, obviously, to bring your costs down is try to go out. Even if you're older and you're getting started, the non-traditional student, try to find some of these scholarships that are out there. You know, we have that scholarships guide, and you can get one for free, aviationcareerspodcast.com slash free. Uh, and even if you get a $500 scholarship, it's, it's worth it, I feel. So hopefully that answered that question. One more question from our uh, YouTube channel, of course. That's Aviation Careers Podcast uh, on YouTube. It says here, I'm getting out of the military soon and will have my associate's degree completed in three more months. Your advice is exactly what I needed to hear. Would you recommend I begin my flight training ASAP or focus on my bachelor's? As far as if you're focused, you're wanting to fly an airplane, so you need flight hours to fly an airplane. You don't need a degree to fly an airplane. The degree you'll need to get hired to those more competitive jobs, like those jobs that are the airline jobs. And also, when the market shrinks, when things get tougher, tougher like during the pandemic or during a downturn, or currently we're looking at high uh, fuel prices again, if we see furloughs and that type of thing, that's when you'll want to have that degree. But I always advise people to please don't forego your flight time uh, for your degree. You'll, you'll definitely want to get the degree. The best thing to do is, if you can, if you can afford it, you have the time and the money, try to do both. Try to finish up the degree and also get out there and do some flying. But uh, flight instructing, it's a great way to build hours. Uh, I, I know I say that a lot, but there are many other ways to do that. You can go to a lot of different airports and do some networking and find people that will actually put you in the right seat of an airplane to do some flying. Um, Interesting thing about that is some of these single pilot aircraft require two pilots because of their operation requirements or because of the insurance. So in that case, you can log that time as second in command. I know someone had left a, another, I'll, I'll answer this one now. Someone asked, you know, how is it that certain places uh, um, are enabling you to come on as a second in command on an aircraft that only needs one pilot and that's that's why they also may have an approved training program where you you're in the right seat as a second in command until you can become a pilot in command how do you get your pilot in command hours that way well you wind up 
getting in the left seat eventually because of the training and the time in the airplane. You finally get over to that left seat. But going back to, to the, the degree uh, or ASAP focus on, on the bachelor's or, or on the flight training, I definitely, uh, depending on how many hours you have from the military, I would, I would definitely uh, focus on the, on the flight time. Uh, now, you said military, so uh, I not sure if you actually have the flight time if you do have the flight time maybe the bachelors will help you out because you can get the restricted atp if that's you're eligible for that so make sure you look over all those rules in the restricted atp there's been a lot of questions there we're going to do another show uh i think with eric crump we're going to talk a little bit about some of the common questions and and uh, errors that people have as far as you know what what a restricted atp is and can i get a restricted atp even if i don't go to a approved school or to a college yes you can um, but it's it's interesting how um, a lot of people read into those rules a lot, and they shouldn't. So we're going to go over a little bit about that later. But I hope this is this has helped you. What do what type of degree do I need? This answer. These are all questions that came from the the video I did about do I need a bachelor's degree to become an airline pilot? So what type of degree do you need? Well. The type of degree is the one that you enjoy getting. By the way, I got myself a computer science and math degree. I was computer science, math, and psychology. I was into artificial intelligence. Loved that stuff. Enjoyed it. Loved flying better. But in that field, because I got into that and I started my own business uh, and doing computer consulting, it enabled me to make enough money to pay for all this other stuff that I did as far as flying is concerned. Got most, most of my multi-engine time just by flying a multi-engine airplane for my personal uh, use or my, for my business. So the type of degree is something you really enjoy. But I will say one thing, an aviation degree, an aviation science, et cetera, degree will help you when you're operating in the aircraft because you'll have a much deeper knowledge of all these different concepts and times, edicts, flying over the water, those kind of things, you know, international flying, those are the things that you'll find out in a degree program that goes towards the operational aspect. If you want to become an engineer, go for it, but don't let it hold up uh, your flight training and also don't let it hold up you moving forward in your career, in your life. Also, don't forget to check out our scholarships guide uh, for some of those things that'll pay for those degrees, even in, in engineering. Well, I tell you, th these are some great questions. Uh, do me a favor, write me at feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Let me know what you think about our our, our new, uh, if you're on YouTube right now, uh, our new look kind of, we're, we're just doing a raw uh, type of videos now. And, and it's been wonderful actually getting to see some of the airplanes on the downwind here. It's uh, it's fun to just see a little Cherokee fly by. And, uh, and that was neat to see, see them take it off and kind of get, gets me kind of excited, as you can tell. I still love uh, Cessna 172 and Piper Cherokee fly buys even though i fly an airbus it's uh, it's just that type of aviation and all types of aviation get me me really really excited uh, but if you do have questions feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com you can also go down the show notes or you can click on uh, comments below and that way that'll help you uh, to move forward in your career i know it takes me some time sometimes to answer these questions some of these questions that i'm answering i've already answered online but i'm putting it into this uh into this uh, episode here but one of the things i really think you should do all everybody that's asking about degrees or whatever it is, is is make sure you put a plan together you might need somebody that's going to help you out you might need a counselor a career counselor a career coach just like we do here uh, but get out there and talk to them talk to somebody who's unbiased but most importantly uh, don't just sit there i want you to do this i want you to do this for me i want you to start doing something now take action right now to move forward in your career don't stop after this is done keep going keep moving forward and I know you'll be able to do it because just taking that one step today will help you move forward in your career and in your life. Well, folks, I really appreciate your watching or listening. We'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there.